Hi, everybody. We're back, oh. and it's spooky season. Ooh. So spooky. <laughs> and so it is time for another Halloween fic fest. That's right. You thought we weren't doing another one, but we but are. It are, is actually it. Yeah. It is back with new rules, sort of. We decided to go with a theme this year, a Samhain theme, meaning uh, that They're all of these spooky. fics in <laughs> all these fics in some net net. Nice background, Tuan. Uh, yeah, for those of you who can't see it, Tuan's got this very like I made a spooky, spooky background. background. Yeah, going on on the Zoom call. Sort of. Yeah. So anyway, yes, we are doing a Samhain theme, which means that the fix we have for you tonight are in some way uh, involved. Some way Irish folklore is involved. So very fun, very exciting, and going to be very weird. Um, I am here. Uh, no, obviously it's me again. Uh, Jess, Jesse, hi. I made the thing. Uh, I uh, we're doing this a little earlier than actual Halloween weekend, mainly because I, who usually facilitate this thing, am going to a wedding, which, while super fun, means that yeah, we cannot be properly spooky, but we're close enough. Also, here I mentioned we got Tuan. Hi, I'm Tuan. I play Algy. I wrote a fiction fest. Fick, fick. <laughs> <laughs> and I like spaghetti. <laughs> I like spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Maria is also here. Hi, I'm Maria and I play Ginny and I also wrote a little fic for tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And I wrote a third fic. Those are our fics. Look at that. Not That was not intentional, the order that I introduced. It just happened that way. Yeah, it's happened that <laughs> yeah. way for my screen too, which is a first. Yeah, weird, right? uh also here to help bring our fix to life we got emily hola is emily voice of cersei and various other town folk yeah we got naomi hello i'm naomi i voice liza yeah james that's me i play rachel i did not write a fic <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you get a. I think you get a pass after the the very chilling fic you see you gave us last. Yeah, <laughs> you. So we were all, we were oh, all really shaken. You were we shook from that. Oh, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I missed it. It's all good. Oh, you. We, your presence was felt. <laughs> your presence was felt. Anyway, last but not least, we have Lena. Hi, I play Miriam, and most importantly, Becky. <laughs> Jebecky? Jebecky. 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 All right. Is Jebecky's theme phrase Jebasic? <laughs> you know? Yeah, so we're all here. We are ready. We are in our cozy wear, in our cozy corners with our cozy drinks and snacks of choice. I think we are ready to go. All right. Which means time to launch into the first fic. And yes, I'm just going to maneuver fic. here. Get the screen in a good place so we can. Uh... Yeah, here we go. I need to pull up my <laughs> script. But I think we're good. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, our first fic tonight is by Tuan. And uh, what is this titled, Tuan? <laughs> this is titled Persephone the Pony. <laughs> Oh, I just yeah. love that title. It is a great title. It, it really is. I'm imagining freaking like flash animated Lauren Faust <laughs> characters frolicking across my screen. Borderline yeah, another episode the of My Little kidney. Pony. Yeah. I'm imagining <laughs> that really like weird fat horse from that one episode of Adventure Time with the pupils <laughs> expands. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. Oh my gosh. All very different. One. Okay. Very different. All very relevant but all very different. Uh, so anyways, we start off. We open with the sounds of clopping through the Henrik Henriksen... Ex mm. Words are... Wor words are Good start. I am a voice actor! <laughs> <laughs> we open with the sounds of clopping through the Henriksen estate. Elliot is in the library reading a good book. Don't ask me which one. I, I don't read. Oh. <laughs> I was like, which way do pages flip? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are with it today. Oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> oh, okay. What is that mysterious clopping sound? Hi, Dr. 
Quaid. Hello, Rachel. Oh, my. <clears throat> Elliot notices that Rachel has brought a pony on a sparkly lead into the library by herself. Rachel, is that a pony? Yep. Her name is Persef Persephone. I see. And how did you meet Persephone? Well, I was just kind of walking home from school when my mom and I saw her on the side of the road. We nursed her back to health and I asked if I could keep her. And she said yes? No, but today she followed me home from school, so my mom let me keep her. Oh, have you had a chance to ride your pony yet? I don't really know how to. I was hoping since you know a lot, maybe you could teach me to ride Persephone. Oh, um, while well, I am flattered, I'm afraid I'm not the most keen on riding horses or any animal for that matter. To be honest, I find the hobby and nuances of animal riding to be quite... Uh... He notices Rachel seems to be in the throes of whether or not to be sad at the next statement. Oh, scary! I am dreadfully scared of... Oh god, here, it's, here we go, it's starting. <clears throat> Being on top of another creature. Oh! Distantly, Liza sneezes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I had no idea. It wasn't written in, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Algernon Graham would be able to assist you, though. I don't know. When I introduced him to Persephone, he seemed really busy. <laughs> <laughs> busy with what? I don't know. He just said he had to do grown-up things before I could ask him if he could teach me. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go show Mr. Carlton. Maybe he can teach me. Bye! Uh, good luck. Oh, it's a... Oh, I can't. My gosh, can we do that? I got it. There we go. Hmm? Hmm? Hello? Just then, Ginny enters. Elliot, are you... Oh, there you are. Oh, um, hello, Miss Kelly. Uh, that's strange, I thought. Um... Did you happen to get one of these weird letters from Algy? A letter? I don't believe I... Oh, here it is. She reaches out and pulls a letter that was tucked into Elliot's book. Oh, uh, that wasn't there before. May I? Sure. Opens letter. <laughs> Frank's lab, 3.30 p.m. Bring a flower. What do you suppose this is about? Beats me. It's about, it's in about 30 minutes, and as far as I knew, only and Eliza got these, so she wanted me to see if anyone else got them. Well, I suppose i better find a flower. Same. 30 minutes later. Elliot and Ginny enter Frank's lab, where, mysteriously, Frank is nowhere to be seen. Liza holds a pink hyacinth, Ginny holds a white rose, and Elliot holds a paper flower he has fashioned himself. Hello? Algae? Hey, Jenny. Oh, um, hello, Miss. Uh, Elliot examines the room oh. as he enters. Whoa. Frank's lab has become a complex web of red strings tied to various pictures, local newspaper clippings, and clippings of Wikipedia art articles and forum posts. Yeah, careful. Someone has kind of turned the lab into a conspiracy maze. Red string and all. Where do we even... <laughs> oh, good. You're all here. And you brought flowers for me. Yeah, you told us to in your note. Uh, honestly, I just wanted to see what you do. You all actually showing up with flowers? Even a paper mache one was low on my list of expectations. Um, it's closer to origami. Yeah. Wait, is this an intervention? What? B -b what? W no. No, not today, Ginny. Not today. Okay. Algy, is this red web you're doing? I'm glad you asked, Liza. As you know, Rachel has brought something seriously dangerous into our home. Her pony? Not a pathetic pony. An entity of evil and deception. Since it stepped into this house, I had my eyes on it. Because, as we all know, horses are not to be trusted. However... I could never imagine the depths of its deception. 
the horse? Again, not a horse. Liza, keep up. I did some research into the last time a horse was even seen in Hainsbury. Using local forums and Wikipedia articles. Hmm, good eye, Elliot. According to local legends, there hasn't been a horse nor ranch in the town of Hainsbury for the last 40 years. After that, I cross-referenced Rachel's story with various folklore and, wi- and wives' tales, which has led me to one undeniable truth. Algie slams his head on the wor- workbench like an Ace Attorney character. Persephone is some form of shapeshifter. And? And? What do you mean, and? Algie, your own brother is a shapeshifter. Yeah, but, but this is different. This is this is strange, foreign thing. Who knows what it wants, what it really is. Sorry, I got distracted. There was a background noise. (laughs) Something going outside. Something's going outside on outside my apartment. Anyway, to be honest, Algin, while I don't believe it impossible that your theory is true, especially considering our line of work, I don't necessarily see enough evidence that this is an immediate problem. I don't believe it. You've all fallen for its otherworldly charms. Sure. I'm gonna go replant this flower. Just you wait. I'll prove how fiendish it truly is. Then you'll see. You'll all see. Okay, let us know how it goes. Try not to do anything too reckless. Um, This is Rachel's pony we are talking about. None of us can be held accountable for what she does to you if you wrong her. It's not a pony! The door slams shut once they all exit. Algy is left alone to plot. You'll see. I just have to execute Operation Caught on Camera. 30 minutes later. We cut to the lawn of the Hendri- Henriksen estate, uh, where Rachel sits with Persephone. She appears a little sad and let down, which I now realize means nothing in an audio format. I'm sorry, Persephone. I couldn't find anyone that would teach me to ride you. Persephone brays. I know you were looking forward to it, too. Maybe we'll run into someone during my junior investigations that will teach me. Like a headless horseman. Hey, Rachel! It turns out I have some time here, so uh, I'm going to teach you how to ride a pony. Really? That's right, kiddo. But uh, I'm going to need a few things first. Any chance you can borrow some harnesses and holsters from your mom's room so we can jury-rig a saddle? But my mom says not to touch those without her supervision. Oh, really? Damn, but darn. Guess it'll have to wait until next time I'm free then. Persephone brays. Wait, I can get them. Just don't tell my mom. And we can't get caught. You're talking to the fastest man alive. Everything we get will be back before your mother even notices it's gone. Okay. She gleefully runs into the manor. All right, you. I know what your deal is, so let's get one thing straight. You're not to harm that little girl. It's not like I'm her dad or anything, but if anything happens to her, I will get blamed, no matter the cause. Got it? No response. Look, it's just you and me. You can drop the whole horse act. No response. Look, I know you're a shapeshifter. My brother's a shapeshifter. Wait, you aren't Jack pulling a prank on me, are you? No response. Fine, have it your way. Jack or not, I will expose your little disguise the only way I know how. He hops up on Persephone. My apologies for this line. By riding you until you can't keep it up anymore. Sorry. Yes! Finally! Suddenly, there is a morphing noise as Persephone manifests a few sets of hands to lock Algy into a riding position. Algy reacts quick enough to get one of his hands free before it's too late. Hey, let me go! You're not allowed to just grow hands from your sides and your neck! I'm gonna take you for a wild ride, boy! Huh? Persephone takes off into oncoming traffic. No, 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 stop! Persephone bounds like a mountain goat on top of the car and then leaps to the side of a building and begins to ride alongside it. Wait, wait, wait! Cut back to the manor as Rachel runs out of the house. Hey, Algie! I got some of my mom's holsters! Algie? Persephone? Oh, no! 
She runs back inside. Ginny, Elliot, and Liza are chatting while doing dinner prep. Come to think of it, where is Frank? Uh, he said he had an errand to run today, something about gathering materials from the lake. Really? Today isn't his usual lake day. You guys, come quick! Algie and Persephone are gone! Oh no. They all run outside. Algie wanted me to get some holsters and some harnesses from my mom's room, and when I got back, they were gone! What's that over there? It looks like some people arguing at a traffic jam. Let's go check. Walk, walk, walk. <laughs> Listen, I can't do anything about it. After the horse jumped on my car, I... Horse? Excuse me, sir, did you say horse? Uh, yeah. Uh, h- hold on. Are you those heinous investigators? A heinous investigation, sir. Now, about this horse, do you know where it went? Well, after it jumped off my car, I think some people were saying it took off down the street, but they also say it was running along the walls. Got it. Thanks for the heads up, sir. Wait, what about Algy? Knowing Algy's stubbornness, he'll be with Persephone. Come on, we have to catch them before anything bad happens. Besides, if Algy turns out to be right, he'll ride that train for weeks. Cut to Algy and Persephone. I didn't mean to have that H there. Never mind. Uh, We hear a bunch of yelps and crunches as if Persephone is going crazy and uh, going on a crazy topsy-turvy ride around Hainsbury. (laughs) How do you like this, rich boy? Are you having fun yet? Sorry, did you say something? I was just posting a couple of selfies and adding them to my I Told You So albums. What? How can you hold a phone while I'm doing all this crazy stuff? Crazy? I mean, sure, it was interesting when you did, like, three consecutive backflips on the highway median, but overall, I think I'd give this Uber drive, like, two stars. Oh, well, then let me show you some real speed. Persephone picks up speed and begins running through oncoming traffic. Horns blare as she nimbly dodges them left and right before leaping off into the woods. How do you like that, huh? What was that, like, 35 miles per hour? 2.3 2.3 stars, and that's generous. <sighs> Persephone reaches top speed and begins to bound from tree to tree, throwing a barrel roll in here and there. They break through the canopy and briefly soar above the trees. I am good at typing. <laughs> Do you even know where you are right now? Are you so desperate for a good rating on you're willing to get us lost? Oh, that's enough! Persephone begins to wildly morph. Uh-oh. Cut to the other investigators wandering around town. Was I drunk when I wrote this? <laughs> I like how you say this, and no one can see the script besides us. No one can us. see the script. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, how far could one pony have gone in rush hour traffic? Definitely not as far as Algernon. What if the traffic wasn't a problem? Rachel, we can't just wish the traffic away. Oh, that was not the right tone. <laughs> I, I was Right. Wait, uh, Rachel, do you what do you mean what if the traffic wasn't a problem for Persephone? Y- yeah. Now, why would traffic not be an issue for Persephone? Well, when we were walking home today, Persephone might have stretched her neck out to grab an apple that was kind of far off. So she can shapeshift. But it's supposed to be our secret, so you can't tell Persephone. Suddenly, a phone rings. Who's calling me right now? Oh, it's Algy! Hi, Algy! Hello! Algy, where are you? Are you with Persephone? Oh, I am with Persephone in the worst way possible! We are heading towards Main Street, I think! We're right by there. Let's go head over there and see what we can do. Uh, guys, I think I see them. Uh, Rachel points just above the buildings, and we see nothing. This is audio old. But there is a writhing mass of creature limbs making its way over the buildings. What is that thing? Uh, my best guess is that's what happens when a shapeshifter decides their form doesn't need to make sense. Look at the top. Is that algae? No! I don't want to be absorbed by this eldritch horror! That's him, all right. Any ideas? I could probably pull Algy out if someone else distracted Persephone. Okay, in that case, I can run the distraction while Ginny rescues Algy, and Elliot, you can... I mean, 
on Wallowitz. All sounds of writhing and mayhem halt. What do you have there? Persephone shyly slithers over to Rachel, restrained algae in tow. Drop it. Algae is thrown to the ground. Yes. <laughs> now apologize. Persephone Ooh. growls. <laughs> now, little mi- now, little missy. Sorry. Oh, you better be! The amount of trauma I will have from this is going to ruin my... <gasps> Yeah, sorry I pushed you or whatever. Towards the end there, you were kind of fast. Perfect. Now we can go home. Or that. Now you can really teach me how to ride a pony. Uh, I don't think so, kid. We'll probably get home by the time your mother arrives. Where has Miss Pryor been anyways? She said she had to help Carlton with something. Five minutes earlier. So you see, Sheriff Rhodes. While we do apologize for the damages caused by the building, uh, I can assure you that not only did our team do the best to do our best to clean up the damages, we to to clean up the damages we caused. I'm a voice actor. uh, We are also taking steps to ensure such damage doesn't happen again. Right, Pryor? Yep. I've even been getting into the habit of leaving the OPA at home. Exactly. You don't have to worry about any more public damage from us. Just then, the writhing, the roaming mass of limbs barrels on by. That writhing ball of limbs wouldn't happen to be affiliated with you, would it? That big thing? No, not at all. I, I highly doubt it. Now, if you'll excuse us, we will need to go deal with that. Uh, and that is the end of our little tale. <laughs> that was beautiful. 10 out of 10. That was great. Yeah. Had a blast. Honestly. <laughs> everyone everyone had some amazing work in there like dang <laughs> emily i apologize uh, oh so I, I was gonna say i i continue to be a huge fan of yours oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was about to apologize for if i exploded your ears i realized after i did all my lines i was like oh i should have turned my game down <laughs> <laughs> it, it like kind of muted it a little bit oh good yeah. thank yeah. you uh it was, yeah it was a wow. Yeah, that that really gave off some fanfic energy, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it did. No, yeah, spellings and all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. I was writing it and I was like, oh, I spelled some things wrong. Ah, oh, that'll add to the fanfic energy. <laughs> spirit truly, truly encapsulated the spirit of a fanfic. Uh, just absolutely incredible. All right. I shall return momentarily. I need to plug my laptop in. Is all good. All right. I mean, I think that I, I, I we could just take this quick second to, I guess, talk about. It. Just to talk about it. Talk well, about yeah, talk about it. Look, quick little talk back in that case. I will say, uh, for anyone out there wondering, Algie's mistrust of horses is completely canon. Oh, I'm thinking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Tuan just took that and ran with it. Yep. We'll be exploring also, that more in season two. I feel like we need to acknowledge that the direction that Persephone the Pony was given was with the intensity of a SpongeBob character because that's something yes. that <laughs> That is something I physically wrote into this because I couldn't think of any better description. Beautiful. Um, my favorite part was the uh, writhing ball of limbs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, we probably should have specified the uh, Irish folklore element of that. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> it was never so, addressed by name. Yeah, the prompt that I was given for this was that uh, Rachel brings home what is known as a puka, which is a, uh, a shapeshifter who can transform into multiple different types of animals. But the horse was the funniest one for us. Absolutely, uh, so- it was. Mm-hmm. And then I was looking up some more lore and it was like, oh, but they can also take a humanoid shape, which has multiple animal-like appendages. So I was like, so they can just mess with their biology mm-hmm. all over oh. the place. Well, I mean, there is that whole thing where um, it is known that like, uh, or there is a part of the Puka lore that is when they turn into a horse, they like will take like drunk stumbling mm-hmm. home from the bar, like yep. out for crazy, like rides in the night and then just dump yeah. them somewhere yeah I, so... think, I, I think as far as most mythological tricksters go they're the nicest because they mm-hmm. according to lore they will take you for a crazy ride 
and they're meant to just drop you off exactly where you started. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they just yeah they don't. Besides that, you're good. You that, can handle that didn't a stupid ride this time. But that's <laughs> what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Also, just yeah, just major props to everyone, but also special tiny shout out to Lana as driver. As driver, <laughs> yes. My favorite Incredible. role to take. We thought that we thought that we couldn't have topped it after Jebeki, but <laughs> but here we are. I, yeah, the, the <laughs> maybe that was Jebeki's father, mother, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's wonderful. Well, I think we're ready for the by far longest fic of the night. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> um, it will become incredibly apparent what my prompt was. Uh, yeah. So I'm not even gonna lead in with it. <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean i guess i did have to actually you know it was going to be incredibly obvious incredibly uh, incredibly obvious gosh i'm a voice actor <laughs> um <laughs> yeah this is going to be a thing tonight um that's just going to be the thing that's the thing for our the, the rest of our lives i hope you know that right oh, yeah mm. so i was about to say that i would just let everyone stumble into it but it's kind of hard when the title of the fic is uh, heinous investigations in keep calm and leprechaun i regret nothing <laughs> um yeah get ready for what i would consider probably the crack fic equivalent of a heinous episode uh and we're gonna get right into it here <clears throat> well kids this is spooky season the investigators have found oh no oh sorry <laughs> already messed up and <laughs> well kids in this spooky season the investigators have found themselves in a particularly odd section of the scary sphere they wander through a craggy dark and distorted wood Ugh, i hate coming to this place just when you think hainsbury can't get any creepier this place count as still being in Hainsbury? All this extra dimensional stuff Frank always talks about seems pretty vague. Still creepy regardless. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Sorry, can we rewind? Because uh, someone decided to rev their engine outside of my apartment building. for like Actually, over, I... this, over Zoom, that sounded like an eerie wind, and I was yeah, like, I thought it was a <laughs> <the> <laughs> <sound> right <laughs> I was like, it's someone revving it's their great. engine. We got the whole sound design. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Owen and Finn secretly snuck their way into the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> By okay. pulling the genius play of just using squares that are the Zoom background. <laughs> okay, my bad. Sorry. Then can we just, uh, oh, well, actually, we're running out of time. So uh, we oh, may yep, need to open up a new Zoom window. Commercial break it. Well, looks like we're going to start this over from scratch. The next Zoom When we call. come back, we'll find out what happened to my arm. <laughs> Ah! Sorry, that was loud. Ah! Okay, we back. Uh, So, uh, some quick things. Uh, I realized we jumped straight into this without clarifying that due to the fact that, you know, we got real lucky with that Avengers bit where we were all present by some miracle but now we're going back to kind of whoever's whoever's around gets to party uh so um we are doing a little bit of a shuffling around of roles so uh, i'm gonna run through that really quick uh for those mostly we're playing the roles that we would normally be playing in an episode of heinous investigations but uh, we've got a few substitutions uh for carlton we have uh james stepping in doing yeah the amazing carlton impression um and let me see going through here. We also have, uh, is that the only replacement? I think it is. For I think this. that's the only replacement. Yeah, I think it's the only replacement yeah. for this one. Uh, the only substitution. But we do have some new characters. Uh, yeah. And all I'll say about those so we don't spoil. Uh, they will be voiced by uh, Tuan and Emily and James again. My hand's gone. No. That's still me. <laughs> what? No. Sorry, Zoom is doing funny things for your audio listeners. Oh. Yeah, such as cutting me limb from limb, drawing in yeah. quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just realized. I, see, at first I thought oh, you were just. See, at first you were. I thought you were just being funny at first, like doing like a bit similar to what Critical Role does. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, at first he got his arm taken by those bug bears. No, sorry. Shout out to Critical Role. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Um, but yeah, no, no. Zoom is really deciding to absorb you into the background. Yeah, okay. they do that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
technology. But anyway, uh, so we're going to start over here with uh, Keep Calm and Leprechaun. Once again, you're welcome for the pun. And uh, let's get into it. Longest fic of the night. Let's go. <clears throat> well, kids, this is this spooky season, the investigators have found themselves in a particularly odd section of the scary sphere. They wander through a craggy, dark, and distorted wood. Ugh, I hate coming to this place. Just when you think Hainsbury can't get any creepier. Does this place count as still being in Hainsbury? All this extra dimensional stuff Frank always talks about always seems pretty vague. Still creepy regardless. Not for long. Remember, Karen reached out about a possible disturbance in the fairy realm. You realize that these probably aren't the cute little fairies the storybooks told you about. Especially not if a goddamn world of monsters feels the need to seal them off in their own separate realm. Um, actually, it wasn't the beings in the scary sphere that had imposed the seal. It was done by the fairy queen. At least that is what Caron told me. In fact, the fairy realm is so secluded that its inhabitants are prevented by magic from locating its gate, unless permitted by the queen in advance. And how are we supposed to find it? Uh, well, we aren't from the fairy realm. We should be able to follow the direction indicated by the limbs of these ooh, menacing and somewhat gnarled trees. Right. Gate. I'm guessing that's the one? The group approaches a rustic wooden gate covered in with all manners of mosses, fungi, flowers, and cute little bugs. Oh. Yeah. Small, slightly glowing spores seem to emanate from it. The whole thing looks somehow whimsical and incredibly eerie at the same time. Yeah, I'd say it gives off fairy vibes. Yeah, it gives on the first one. What do you, hold on, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by dibs on the first one? It's dibs on the first one. Dibs on first one in. It's dibs on first one in. Not on the first fairy. Got it. I can't read today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not mul- we don't have the, the opportunity sorry. to have multiple takes. This is live, uncut. Yeah, baby. It's live and uncut, and I apologize. Anyway, <laughs> Jenny. Ru- anyway, Jenny rushes through the gate with a reckless abandon, or is it wild abandon? Uh... Wing. <laughs> Crap, Jenny. The rest of the group chases after her. We don't know what's on the other side. The investigators stand, speechless, as they enter a small clearing. They take in their immediate surroundings, which are as fantastical and twisted in the best way, wait, that are fantastical and, tw- oh no, I was right, <laughs> are as fantastical and twisted in the best way as one might expect from a fairy realm. Damn, that is, I can't decide whether to say whimsical or creepy. They aren't mutually exclusive. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Look at all the cute little trees and the cute little animals and oh, these cute little mushrooms. <laughs> Hello, Jenny. Sorry, Jenny goes to boop one of the mushrooms, <laughs> but Elliot <laughs> blocks her way. Um, one moment, Miss Kelly. Those are uh, conocybe phyllaris, uh, which are incredibly poisonous. Uh, only if ingested, but still um, probably best to exercise caution. Good to know the possibility of inim- imminent danger is as high as any other job we get. He paces around the clearing, thinking. We, sh- we should keep our guard up, take note of anything suspicious, and most importantly, stay together. He turns around to face his team, only to realize that there is something or someone missing. Uh, where's the kid? Oh, he mumbled something to himself about surveying the area for other potentially dangerous fungi and wandered off. I think he went... She begs, she points vaguely eastward. That way? Uh, I guess Karen's case can wait. Let's go find him. Scene transitions to Elliot wandering around another clearing, taking notes on clusters of mushrooms. Hmm, fascinating. I can only imagine how dejected Frank will be from missing out on this. But I I suppose providing him with diligent notes will suffice, at least for now. A voice breaks through the stillness of the clearing with an egregiously obnoxious Irish accent. Apologies to any listeners from Jesse's maternal homeland of Ireland. Oh, a notebook. You're a real fun character, aren't you? I don't know if any of that was discernible. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to find out. 
<laughs> I guess we'll find out. Hmm? Hello? Um, is anyone there? I must warn you that I am deceptively capable in a fight uh, under the right circumstances. And then, in what seems like the blink of an eye, a very small man in green, in a green, red, and brown getup appears in front of Elliot. Hello there, little fella. <laughs> How, where did you come from? Oh, you know, here and there, but that's besides the point. I think the real question is, where did you come from? Because, no offense, lad, but you certainly don't look to be from these parts. Well, um, no, and on that note, I should... Really get back to my friends, uh, with whom I came from, not these parts. Uh, please excuse me. Elliot turns to go, but the man is too fast for him and cuts him off. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, lad. What's the rush? Now I'd very much like to hear about these friends of yours. Oh, um, I've likely said too much already, especially considering that by your appearance and ability, you are clearly a leprechaun. And if you'll pardon my candor, an extremely invasive one at that. Uh, now, oh. I am not one to subscribe to stereotypes, but I have a feeling that in this case, I would be correct in assuming that you're trying to trick me in some way. I would rather not have that experience, and so I bid you good day. Um, good day. <laughs> While Elliot once again tries to leave with the same result, the leprechaun approaches cautiously. Now, who said anything about tricking ya? Can't a fellow meet another fella in all friendly like? Giving in the middle of a vast wood may not be the most ideal place, but you work with what you're giving, eh? Uh, Leprechaun extends a hand to Elliot. Name's Craig O'Leary. Elliot stands looking at the small man, a look of anxiety and confusion on his face. You know, this is usually the part where you shake back. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, I suppose I was just caught off guard by, well, that is, uh, Craig. That's an interesting name for a leprechaun, uh, at least from those I have heard. What are you talking about? Craig's a good name. Good Gaelic name. Definitely know my fair share of Craigs around these parts. Now, are you going to just stand there or are you going to introduce yourself? You don't seem the type to forego good manners. Um, all right. Uh, Elliot reaches out and cautiously shakes Craig's hand. Uh, Dr. Elliot Quaid, uh, pleased to uh, meet you. Ah, an Irish name! <laughs> and I can feel from that handshake of yours that you've got that mythical energy thrown through ya. I've got a sense for these kinds of things, you know. <gasps> that makes us kindred! Oh, um, I wouldn't be so sure about that. You're from this realm, whereas my genealogy originates from ethereal infer and infernal planes parallel to this one. <laughs> ah, potato, potato! Hey, you know, from one otherworldly sort to another, I'd really appreciate it if you introduced me to your friends and the way you all come into my lovely home here. Ah, uh, ah, so that's what this is about. I don't know what you could be referring to, me boyo. Oh my god. Uh, uh, you, you want to find the gate so that you can travel to the mortal realm. Uh, well, unfortunately for you, I honour the law laid forth by your queen, and while I mean you no personal harm, I cannot in good conscience show you to the gate. And um, if that's all you were expecting from me, I'm sorry, but maybe it would be best if I take my leave now. Goodbye. Elliot tries to leave for a third time, but Craig is persistent. Elliot, however, is determined to leave. Oh, come now, lad. Surely we can work something out. No, thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I... You like gold? You must know leprechauns always have that around. I could offer you... That's gold. very kind of you, but, well, this is a particular interest of mine. Then what do you want? I can make it happen. Trust me. Okay, Kelly continuously tries to outmaneuver Craig. All I want is to go. There is a sudden chomp and Elliot springs back in shock and pain. He holds an injured hand close to him. Oh! Elliot examines his hand and then looks bewildered at Craig. Um, you bit me. Did I? Oh, apologies, my boy. Must have been a reflex. Uh, just for that, I won't give you any more trouble. Uh, go on, and may the road rise up to meet you. Heck yeah, Jess got that little saying in there. Ha! Anyway, Elliot finally takes his leave. Craig watches him go, a mis 
yeah, a mischievous smirk on his face. Um, thank you. After that, after that nonsense, I believe I was right in saying that we are far from kindred. Oh, don't you worry, lad. <laughs> we will be. Very soon. Dun, dun, dun. Cut back to the investigators, who are wandering through the woods. All kinds of fey spirits watch from the bushes and trees and chatter to each other. I love this place. I hate, I this, hate place. this place. <laughs> Let's just find Elliot, get to the bottom of Charon's case, and get out of here. But I will admit, this place is a little eerie. And it is at that moment that Elliot makes his way out of the trees, wheezing. He has been running. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. There you all are. Elliot, where have you been? You you look... Are you okay? What happened? Um, for the moment, I believe I'd prefer if we didn't talk about it. Now, where were we? Caron's case, yes. He claps his hands together, then immediately regrets it. You sure you're okay? <laughs> oh, yes. It's merely a small bite wound. It will probably heal in a few hours. Now then, Caron said we could find information on a perpetrator in a place called the Robin's Nest. Uh, based on his directions, it shouldn't be too far from here. Oh, sounds cute. I love Robins. Pretty sure there won't be any Robins there, Ginny. Lead the way, Doc. Gestures for the group to move out. Vamos. Uh, Carlton casts an aside glance to Elliot. And uh, try not to get the lots this time, huh, kid? Carlton suddenly freezes when he gets a good look at Elliot. Uh, kid? Um, yes, Mr. Carlton? Not to alarm you, but, uh, are you getting shorter? Mr. Carlton, <laughs> I mean no offense, but this is really- Is this- what is this really the time to be making disparaging jokes regarding my height? No, kid, I mean it. You look shorter. I mean, shorter than usual. He's right. Like, I think I'm taller than you. And I have it on good authority that I'm the shortest one on this team. The good authority is you, by the way. You have all our medical <laughs> records. Sorry, I forgot about that one. <clears throat> uh, what? But, but how could I possibly... Uh, perhaps this fairy forest is having an effect... Uh, uh, having some sort of strange effect on us? No, not us. Just you. Elliot, you said you had a bite wound. What bit you exactly? Um, before I can say any more, he gets a little bit shorter. Um, <laughs> um, would you believe me if I had told you that I had a fairly peculiar encounter with a leprechaun? Cut to outside the robin's nest. It's a quaint little inn housed with uh, housed in an enormous, probably magical tree, uh, from which you can hear shouting, the occasional smashing of plates, and a general ruckus. Oh, another bar. Mythical beings sure like to party, don't they? It sounds violent in there. I like it. Great, let's go. Uh, leans in toward Miriam. And let's make it quick. The kid's looking weirder by the minute. Um, Mr. Carlton, I can hear you. Well, it's true. Look at you. Last time I checked, your hair wasn't the definition of ginger. Well, on the bright side, you and Liza <laughs> Matt. That's kind of cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Don't worry, Elliot. You're definitely pulling it off. Oh, um, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and on that note, let's move. They enter the pub and Miriam approaches the first rowdy gathering of fairies she sees. She smiles kindly and then... Hey! The group suddenly falls silent and turns to face her and the investigators. We're looking for Robin. A friend of ours, Charon, said we could find him here. A voice calls from the darkest corner of the room, also in a crazy Irish accent. It's her. Thank you very much. A figure emerges from the darkness and is much shorter than expected. She is a leprechaun with dark hair and cute little freckles. She also carries a club. So, old Charon came through after all. Or at least he tried. No offense, but you don't look like the most hardened bunch. We get that a lot. Now, can you fill us in on what the trouble is so we can do our job? Right down to business, then. I like it. But is there anything I can get you before we start? 
a pint, some brown bread. The beef stew is particularly good at this time of year, if I say so myself. A crash in the background as the ruckus in the pub resumes. Not that Robin is having any of it. Oi! One more dish hits my floor, Sean Finnegan, and I swear, may the cat eat you and then may the devil eat the cat. That's translated for the rest of y'all. Yeah, no no Gaelic tonight. (laughs) She turns back to the stunned investigators and says pleasantly, So, what would you care for? You know, I think I'll take that take that pint now. Make that two. Three. Four. The investigators gather around a table in the corner of the pub with Robin, who explains the current situation. Everyone drinks but Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. We've got a certain uh, someone around these parts who's been really acting the maggot, causing all kinds of trouble. Uh, but uh, Karen told us there was some kind of disturbance. He is the disturbance. Nobody's quite sure what he's playing at, but he's been up in everybody's business. Sneaking around people's property, asking all kinds of strange questions about things nobody's meant to know. And leaving people's things bashed and banjaxed when he doesn't get the information he was looking for. Whatever that is. Now, he's always been an irritating fella, that Craig O'Leary. But these are some strange goings on, even for him. Um, I'm sorry, did you say Craig O'Leary? Why? You know him? We've been acquainted, yes, unfortunately. Robin finally gets a good look at Elliot and comes to a realization. Oh my. Say you wouldn't have happened to be on the receiving end of a bite from Mr. O'Leary, would you? The fact that you would ask that makes me, has me extremely terrified, but um, yes. Oh, well, this just became personal for you all then. Why? I believe old Craig's afflicted one of your own with uh, dum, dum, dum. Le- leprechaunism, <coughs> which is just Sorry. fine when you're born naturally with it among the fair folk like myself. But for anyone else, I... Uh, so you're saying that, what, leprechauns are like werewolves or something? Eh, in a way, sure. Although I'd say leprechauns are a tad more intimidating, but however you need to process the situation. Yes, um, hello, the afflicted speaking. Uh, what exactly does this entail, if I may ask? Ah, oh, well, I can already tell you've gone through some of the changes already. Surprised I didn't catch it sooner, honestly. But the short of it is, if you don't get the leprechaun who afflicted you to undo it before twilight, you'll be a leprechaun forever. What? But why would he do that? What would he have to gain out of... Oh. Robin, you said this O'Leary guy has been interrogating people lately? Aye. So that means once he finds the information he's looking for, he'll need some leverage. Moment of realization dawns on Elliot. It was the gate between realms. That's what he was after, and I knew it. And I, instead of doing anything about it, I let him out with me. Oh, yeah. Now I get to do the accent. (laughs) Here we go. Mm. Oh, how could this get any worse? Yeah, that's right. Everyone's getting a piece of the bad Irish accent pie. Anyway, Elliot's eyes go wide and he slaps a hand over his mouth before immediately uncovering it. Oh, gosh darn it. As if my accent wasn't confusing enough for you lot already. Okay, that probably seems like a bad sign, but I think it's so cute. Say something funny. What I think Ginny means is, don't worry, Elliot. We'll find Craig and straighten this mess out. I should have probably mentioned Ginny's a bit tipsy from the beer right now. <laughs> Before anything else can be said, a familiar voice interjects. Or he could cut to the chase and find you. And like just like that, Craig appears. Hello there. Duh! Where the hell did you come from? Nice to finally meet heinous investigations in person. Well, those of you with whom I hadn't already been acquainted. He looks at Elliot. Nice to see you again, lad. Or should I say... Some of the morning to your legs! Why you? I, well, my assumption is that I can't ascertain any demonic power under current circumstances, but if I could, I well, I, I'd... You know about us? I have my sources. And once I caught your boy here wandering around the Feywilds, well, I took advantage of the situation for a little deal. 
Let me guess. We show you the way back to our world, you change the kid back. Now you're getting it. You've no business outside this realm, Craig O'Leary. You cause enough chaos here. It was only one little joke, Robin. A prank. A farce. Maybe it was like two or three or seven. But that's not important. We had a great crack, didn't we? You burned down half a village. Small casualty of a good time. But why am I talking to you anyways? When I'm meant to be making a deal with the investigators here. So, what do you say? You realize you've put us in an awkward spot here, right? It's gonna take a second to figure this out. I say we don't do it. What? Elliot, you don't want to stay like this forever. No, but I also agree with Mr. Colton. You've all been put in a... Oh god, it's so hard to do (laughs) Yeah. You've all been in a complicated position because of me. And if I'm the one who caused this situation, I would like to rectify it. (laughs) Well, that's just grand. You're doing the right thing, Sonny. Wait a moment. I said I wanted to fix things, not that I wanted to go in on a deal. Well, how else do you expect to do it? I have a proposition. You... You are clearly the... I'm thinking, you're clearly the type to engage in a friendly competition, um, right? I'd say that's bang on. Then how does this sound? No deal, but rather a game with a bet attached. You choose the game, the rules, the conditions, etc. All I ask is that I choose the terms, which you can probably guess are as follows. If I win, you change me back. If you win, I will show you to the gate. Kid, are you insane? That's a terrible deal. (laughs) Oh, you're on. Well, crap. Gaete, I want to see where this goes. What's the game, then? Craig grabs three of the beer mugs from the table and empties whatever is left of them. One of the mugs was Jenny's. She was not finished. Oh, not fair! Craig grabs a, let's call it a walnut, why not? <laughs> and puts it under one of the mugs. Woo-hoo. Here's the deal. I put the nut under one of these year mugs. I'll shuffle them around for a bit, and when I'm done, you tell me which mug the nut's under. Sounds simple enough. See, Carlton, not bad at all. Oh, yeah! And one more thing. Craig snatches the glasses off Elliot's face. Yoink! <laughs> Hey, my eyeglasses. I can't see without those. Give give them back. Uh, uh, uh. You said yourself, lad. I make the rules, conditions, etc. And I say you get your cheaters back when you've lost. Or maybe win. Although, I highly doubt it. (laughs) Elliot, you don't have to do this. We can find another way. I've already struck a deal, Miss Liza. I can't go back on my word now. Well, I can't watch you go through with it. I'm out. Miss Liza! I'm out too, and not just because I want to share a drink with every fairy in here. (laughs) Jenny follows Liza. Wait. Ah, who needs them? Now, shall we play? Elliot thinks for a moment. We shall. Craig shuffles the mugs around in at a ridiculous speed. Elliot doesn't. I'm to secretly Algernon Graham. <laughs> Sorry, Elliot does his best to follow, but is clearly struggling. Finally, he stops, gesturing to the mugs. Well, lad. Elliot looks at the mugs for a moment, intense contemplation. <laughs> it's the one on the left. What? No, it's not. It's obviously the one in the middle. Kid, listen to me. Would you two idiots shut up and let him choose? Elliot points to the mug on the left. Um, that one. You sure? Final answer. Oh, sorry, lad, but... Lifts the mug, show nothing below it. I'm afraid that's game. (laughs) Well, a deal's a deal. Take me to the gate, won't you? Of course. But, kid! A deal is a deal, Mr. Carlton. Let's go. I told you it was the middle. <laughs> the investigators, plus Robin and an ecstatic Craig, are led by Elliot to yet another area of the woods. Well, here we are. Um, I'm 
sorry to tell you, lad, but this doesn't exactly look like a gate to the other realm. Oh, I know. Our deal was if I lost, I would lead you to the gate. I never said which gate. Which? Now, Miss Liza. So suddenly, Liza and Jenny enter with a tall, elegant figure. It's the Fairy Queen. Hey, everybody. I hope we didn't miss too much. No, I believe we've seen just enough, as well as what you've told me. Your dress is so sparkly. <laughs> That's right. This is the Fairy Queen's gate. <laughs> um, this, is where, this is where the Fairy Queen hangs out. <laughs> Robin kneels before the Queen. Elliot notices and follows. Your Highness. She looks back at Carlton and Miriam. Show some respect, would you? Oh, uh, right. Uh, uh-huh. Craig O'Leary, you have caused widespread mischief and distress outside of the allowable norm across this realm with intention to continue this path in the next. And for that, I am placing you under arrest. Your trial among the Council of Fairies will be swift, but, but very unpleasant. Craig, enraged, looks at Elliot. What? What is this? You! You tricked me! Good. Now we're even. I believe this is what Frank would call a deus ex machina. Craig, panicked, tries to make a break for it, but the fairy queen waves a hand and Craig is gone. <laughs> yep! Thank you, Heinous Investigations, for helping me deliver justice. You are welcome to the fairy realm as my guests anytime. Oh, and before I forget... She looks at Elliot. I am not the one who afflicted you, although I think we can all agree that I have some power and authority beyond that. Fairy Queen waves a hand and Elliot's back to normal. Normal weird accent at all. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Highness. Of course. Uh, fairy Queen turns to Robin. Hey, I feel like coming back to mine is going to be a good trial. Well, can't refuse royalty, can I? Robin gives a wave. Bye for now, investigators. And like that, they're both gone. The investigators stand bewildered for a moment. You knew that Craig guy was going to cheat, didn't you? Um, yes. I am also fairly certain he ended up hiding the walnut up his sleeve, so my guess was rendered moot regardless. And you sent Liza and Ginny to get the Fairy Queen? Well, I sent Miss Liza. Ginny sort of just tagged along. Worth it. <laughs> For the record, I thought Elliot and I put on a pretty convincing performance. Gotta say, kid, call me impressed. That was a pr pretty clever stunt you just pulled. Thank you, Mr. Carlton. Guess you could call it the luck of the Irish. Oh, oh Come no. back from whatever hellhole I was in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but you know if Frank were here, he would have said it. The end. <laughs> the crackiest of crack fix. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Ah, oh, I told y'all. Juggling the Elliot uh, accent the and the Irish accent. Good lord. It was hard <laughs> to maintain either. Cancelled. Cancelled each other. It also, I just great. saw the chat laughs in Irish. Laughs in Irish. <laughs> Truly yeah. offended the entire nation of Ireland tonight. <laughs> Quite possibly I might have ruined any chances at being a part of the Irish community by that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I actually believe if you're a certain number of, um, if you're a certain number of places removed or generations removed from an Irish citizen, you could technically have citizenship in Ireland. I think I just miss it, the mark anyway by one generation, but... <laughs> I think I'm... Record, even if I didn't wait. miss the mark already, wait, I'm somebody who sure lives in Ireland. Uh, yeah, it's something like if you're, I think it's, I think it's two up to two generations removed from ah, an Irish born or like a natural born Irish citizen. Um, yeah, I might be three or more. <laughs> yeah, you, I think it's that. I don't exactly remember my family who, like, my Irish half of the family discussed it many times, and mm -hmm. I kind of was only half engaged. Yeah, but, my 23 and me was like, your last Irish ancestor was like five to eight generations ago. So I don't <laughs> count. Yeah. <laughs> In a fun fact for you all, I am technically an Irish lady. I do oh, own oh, like a one oh by my. one square. Yeah, hey, there you go. I, I, I own that in Scotland. Hey. Mm. Let's go. 
I own. You're with royalty tonight, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep throwing the my brains around. Three queens. Oh lord, <laughs> royalty and a right bastard. Royalty and a right bastard. Honestly. <laughs> I will say this fic was fully based on a weird ass dream I had <laughs> about this scenario. And then I was like, you know what? We're doing a Samhain. We're doing a Samhain theme this year. Now is the time for me to freaking pull out this weird fever dream. For some life. reason, for some reason, my brain was like, your dream was as follows. You're just in the Fey Wilds and out of the bush pops this man's my name was Craig O'Leary. I'm a bike shop. <laughs> Not me, Elliot. Not, not me, Elliot. I have a lot of dreams. <laughs> you may not understand this about me. No, but you at this point you should all know about me that I am way too involved in the world of this podcast to the point where I just have full dreams about episodes that haven't happened yet or that will never happen. <laughs> like this one, which will never ever see the light of day as a real episode, but I can put it here. Not yet. <laughs> no, I refuse. Yeah. It's enough. real now. Oh, God, no. it's not if, canon. If one of this our is fans solidly not is canon. an animator, it will happen. It's true. No one needs they to will hear. Make... No one needs to hear my abomination, half Irish, half Elliot accent. No one. Anyway, <laughs> enough about me complaining about my accent abilities for like the fifth time tonight. You know, if you couldn't tell, I have a bit of a complex about it. Um. We have one more fic to do, and uh, I feel like see I can't say I saved the best for last because I feel like we've had such a good time with these other two already, and they've already been especially Twan's has been so lovely, but <laughs> we got one more by Maria Burns that we will address after this here commercial break. Yes. <laughs> One more fit. 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 Oh, the lag. We got it. The lag. The lag was magnificent, and we all know it. Chanting is great. Okay. So we have our final fic of this Halloween fic fest, and it is by Maria Burns. Yes, and it is called a story of Mondays, and we should probably go into all the substitutions that are happening. Oh, because there are <laughs> many. It's a story of Mondays, John. Yeah. I lost the tab that has that information. <laughs> I will. I, I still have it up. I'll, I'll grab it. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. According to this, everyone is as usual. Everyone's keeping the characters they normally have, uh, and exactly. then. Oh no, wait, no, I don't see the substitutions. The oh wait, no, yes, I do. I do. Yeah. It's my bad. I didn't see it for a second, but we're back. Okay. <clears throat> we have uh Actually, I don't think anyone's for... their characters for this one. Uh correction, I am, and so are you. <laughs> and everyone is, except those are the ones that aren't. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, we're all ourselves to an extent. Yeah, we're all ourselves. You're all yourselves, but also other people. Yes. But additionally, yeah. but we have Tuan is Frank. Naomi is oh. Ben- <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Naomi is Benji, Emily as Carlton, and myself as Orville. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. All right. Let's do it. Um, it was a dark and stormy night in Hainesbury. Orville was being impossible, according to Ginny. But he said she was the one who was impossible. And honestly, I stopped listening because I got distracted contemplating the molecular energy of weather manipulation. Well, that's another story. Picture the creepiest woods ever. Got it? Twisty trees, disturbing noises that trigger your sense of uncanny valley. Now, picture Ginny crash landing in the bushes. (laughs) The woods, the darkest hour before dawn. Ginny lands, not very gracefully. I can be friends. I'm a great... Friend. A wailing comes from the distance. It's definitely a sound that screams stay away to anyone but Ginny. Hello? Hello? From the trees, a spirit approaches, cloaked in gray. Sticks are tangled in her long red hair. She's crying. Oh my gosh, are you okay? The figure looks up. Her eyes are red, literally red. What are you doing here? I always wail here on Mondays. 
I kind of crashed. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, I was... Wait. Why are you sorry? Well, hearing the wail of a banshee means certain death. Or at least that's what everyone says. I wouldn't know. People always run away, so I never get to check. It's one of the primary triggers for my anxiety. Oh! No, I'll be fine then! I'm already dead, sort of. Hi, Virginia <laughs> Kelly, vampire. Kimberly Graffley. Graffy. Banshee. Why are you crying? Oh, it, it's kind of what I do. It's part of my whole thing. I don't know. Uh, oh, well, what if you're happy? Uh, that doesn't happen often for a harbinger of doom. It isn't exactly good for interpersonal relationships. Oh, I guess so. Is that why you wail out here? I usually wail at home, but my roommate has a knitting circle on Mondays. She wanted me to stay, but some of the others say I disturb the atmosphere oh hey carlton sometimes says that about me because i talk so much who oh i have the best idea next monday you can hang out with me i mean we can hang out because i'm not doing anything so if you're not doing anything it's a date really like a date date or like oh it's a date because it's the date <laughs> that we're sorry i just assumed i mean I'm cool being friends. I would like to take you out. You're rather enchanting. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. No, no, yes. I mean, yes. Okay. Okay. It's a date. The following Monday, Jimmy's room. Algy is trying his best to understand the situation. Who, who is that woman in the kitchen? Algy, you know Liza. No, not Liza. The one with... Half the forest in her hair and glowing eyes. My date, Kimberly. I, I, I'm sorry, you're going out with her? What, what does Orville think about this? What Orville thinks about this is none of my business. He's been so clear that we're friends. We're just friends and it's fine. It's mutual. Uh, Jimmy, she has glowing eyes and she keeps wailing. Frankly, Algy, you don't get to say anything about anyone's dating life after Vera. Fair point. Anyway, she said I was enchanting. Uh, I'm so sorry if you can hear Baz yawning like a <laughs> yawning. Yeah. back here. Yeah. No, that's Baz, just really it's fine. <laughs> Showing up my wailing game. <laughs> oh my Baz. Okay. Doge. Best anyway. doge. That's a textbook <laughs> step one move. So you're saying I'm not enchanting? Uh, uh, of course you're enchanting. Look at you. And wearing red, too. It uh, brings out the white of your fangs. Oh, Algy, you're so sweet. It'll all be fine. I'm not a stranger. There's a difference. We're all pretty strange, Algy. They process this in silence for a moment. The clock in the hall chimes. I'm still going. Algy thwips in front of her to block the door. <laughs> I'll be fine, vampire, remember? There's a brief struggle and the door slams. Oh, I hope this doesn't end up being my fault somehow. The sound of Banshee wailing and Ginny's high laughter fades into the distance. Later, at a very secluded and definitely murdery grove, but I guess it's not, I guess it's not that murdery with the candles and the picnic and the flowers. It's kind of sweet, actually. Aww. Oh, wow. I love these flowers. And you even brought blood. That's so nice of you. You're so sweet. It pays to have friends at the hospital. Doctors? Morticians. Ginny, I just wanted to thank you for a lovely evening. It isn't often I get to have fun and relax like this. Tell me about it. Last time I was on a date, we ended up fighting. He's just so stubborn and so quiet. I could never tell what he was thinking. Orville, the stoic and quiet and confusing. Ugh, I wish he would just relax and fly with me or just let go a little. You talk about him a lot. Yeah, I guess. 
I'm sorry. It's just so much easier for me to figure people out, you know? Usually, I I've never quite cracked him open. <laughs> My roommate is like that. She has all these hobbies and passions that seem to go in and out. She's the most alive person I've ever met. Kind of makes me want to kill her. <laughs> or kiss her. <laughs> I can never decide. Kim, this is so fun, and I really like you. I really like you too, Ginny, but... But I think both of us might like other people more. Can we be friends? We already are. They toast their glasses. Minute. I need a minute. So wholesome. So wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Halloween night. Oh, gosh. Oh, Martin's in this. Ah. <clears throat> ah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, God. Can I even? I'm doing so much Elliot tonight. <clears throat> I believe in you. All right. Yeah, doing Martin. Here we go. <clears throat> Set those glasses down there, Liza. Uh, this is shaping up to be one of the best Halloween... Uh, <laughs> to be the best Halloween bash we've ever thrown. Is the fog machine on? Do we have enough champagne? Is the graveyard charcuterie in order? <laughs> graveyard charcuterie! <laughs> he I've triple-checked the super secret party planning notebook. Everything is perfect. We should be ready to open the doors soon. Miriam enters and is immediately tangled in the fake webs and Halloween lights. She is followed by Rachel, Benji, and Frank. Ugh, why does everything have to be covered in webs? I hate spiders. It's part of the atmosphere. It's festive, right, Benji? Yeah, Frank is going to take us trick-or-treating. We're going to go ride broomsticks. Your what? Ah, don't r listen to them. It's just kid stuff. Wow, would you look at the time? We better get going. We have a multi-neighborhood plan and no time for nonsense. On an unrelated note, no one go into the lab. No reason. Just don't. Except Ellie. Ellie can, but only if necessary. Um, I'm not sure that there will be a need. I will be otherwise occupied escorting Miss Liza during this soiree. <laughs> As you see, I am the watering can to her flower pot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now that's a new one. Oh, I just heard it. I just heard it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. My soul is not ready for that one. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Three of us rattled around all at once. Oh gosh. <clears throat> okay, we're good. We're good. Miriam, you want to take that again? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now that's a new one. I think it's a very clever costume. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Have fun at the party, Mom! Frank, Rachel, and Daisy sees giggling. <laughs> <laughs> They're up to something. I know it. Relax a little. You have the night off. And what's better than a fancy mansion full of lovely beings to be flirted with? Uh, Self-respect. A sharp knife, whiskey, not having to wear the stupid costume, not having to be lectured by a guy who's dressed as the ghost of Frank Sinatra. Hey, I'll have you know that this is a genius costume. I think you make a lovely princess, Miriam. It, it was Rachel's idea. I look like cotton candy to rub on me, and someone tried to clean it up with glitter. Ginny enters in a cloud of white and wings. Orville enters behind her, clearly dressed as a demon, clearly miserable. <laughs> the vibes are frosty. I find this offensive. <laughs> oh my gosh, Miriam, you look so beautiful. Thanks. You look great too. Nice horns, Orville. Please stop mocking me. You look handsome, Orville. Yeah, he looks hot. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop flirting with me. I'm not. You are so dramatic. Carlton pops his head around the corner. He is dressed like Prince Charming. Miriam screams in outrage. Ah, oh, God! Oh, I knew she was up to something. <laughs> Doors are open. Nice dress, Pryor. Go away. The sounds of a party. Clinking glasses, dancing, lots of chatter. Thank you for inviting us. I can't tell you what a relief it is to see that everyone I met last week is still alive. Even after they heard me wailing. Sweetheart, I told you already, I would have been dead many times over if there was any truth in that myth. Aw, you guys are so sweet. I love love. 
I can't thank you enough, Jenny. That night when you were out with Kim, I had a lot of time to think about how much she means to me. She waited up till dawn for me to come home, and we finally talked about everything we never had. I made you this as a thank you. She hands Jenny an incredibly pink and excessively long fluffy scarf. (laughs) It's a little long. I lost track of time. Oh, it's so beautiful. Thank you. Might I ask you, though, who is that man hiding behind the ice sculpture of a ghost? Oh, that's just Orville. He doesn't really like parties. He's been watching you all night. Oh, he's protective. My friends and I don't have the best luck when it comes to parties. No, we don't. (laughs) Don't look now, but I think he's coming over here. (laughs) Good luck. Kimberly does that wing woman move where she pretends she's being signaled from across the room. Cell follows her. Orville approaches, clearly after a long struggle with himself. He pulls an extremely startled Ginny onto the dance floor. Ginny, I changed my mind. About what? I don't think we can be friends. I want you to, I don't want you to stop flirting with me. Oh, Orville, I don't want to stop flirting with you either. (laughs) You look beautiful in those wings. Do you want to go flying later? Of course I do. But if this is going to work, we have to communicate, okay? Okay. She hugs him. Across the room, Miriam rolls her eyes. Young love. Where did you come from? I was securing the perimeter. I already secured it. What did you do to get your hair like that? Sacrifice your firstborn to the 1980s? In the spirit of our costumes... How about we call a truce till midnight? (sighs) Fine, but remember, I'm still armed. They shake hands. On the balcony, Liza and Elliot are looking out over the grounds. Um, Miss Liza, thank you for asking me to be your escort. It truly has been an honor. Elliot, the party isn't over yet. We still have hours. In fact, if I know Martin, we'll be waving goodbye to the last guests at dawn. It is a unique experience to have the house so full of strangers, and for once, nothing is going wrong. (laughs) No vampires or plots or malevolent ghosts? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I I would like to take this temporary cessation of chaos to remark upon your loveliness. Wait, what is that? She points. Three broomsticks are careening through the air over the garden. They're overloaded with pillowcases full of candy. Cut to the sky. Uh, Frank, are these things supposed to wobble? (laughs) Nope! I'm experiencing turtlelance. (laughs) I think you mean turbo plants? Turbulence! Ah, this isn't good! What does that mean? I think it means we're going to crash. I think you're right! The brooms begin to wobble more and more, candy sprinkles from the bags. I forgot to account for the surplus of weight during re-entry! I don't want to die, Mr. Frank! We won't die, right, Frank? Right, Frank? We might have to ditch some of the candy. No! (laughs) The brooms shudder in the air, slowing to a near stop, getting closer and closer to the ground. It is a bumpy descent. Brace yourselves! Frank pulls out a contraption from his pocket and starts pressing buttons. A door opens on the ceiling of the house. There's the sound of impact, then silence. Meanwhile, on the dance floor... Did you hear that? It sounded like Frank. He crashed his broomstick. He what? Don't worry, they're fine. I could hear him recalibrating the trajectory in his head. Liza and Elliot run past at full speed and down the hall. Miriam and Carlton follow. Algie has already been there and back. He's right. They're fine. Are you eating cotton candy? Gimme! No! no. <laughs> <laughs> the lab. Frank, Benji, and Rachel have landed in a literal sea of fluffy blue cotton candy. It fills the room up to the ceiling. Liza, Elliot, Carlton, and Miriam look on, stunned. <laughs> it worked! The super high-speed sugar spinner was a success! Are there any injuries? No. Even the candy is okay. Brilliant! This changes everything! Oh, hi everyone! What is happening right now? We're back from trick-or-treating. We had turbulence during re-entry. Rachel, are you okay? I'm fine, Mom. Frank is the best trick-or-treater ever. We got so much candy. (laughs) You know what? It's Halloween. 
I'm not going to ask any more questions. At least everyone's alive. She leaves with a handful of cotton candy. Frank turns to everyone else. Can you help me push this into the hallway? Thank heavens I ordered extra party favor bags. Dawn. Guests leaving toting obscene amounts of cotton candy. Martin and Liza watch from the steps. Martin's wizard hat is now slightly flattened. Oh my god, he's a wizard. Sorry. (laughs) Um, A very successful event all around. I don't know how we'll top this next year. We ought to start planning now. Let's just enjoy it for a moment. It's rare that we have an unhaunted Halloween around here. Aha! Unhaunted Halloween! That'll be next year's theme. Liza pulls out the super secret party planning notebook and writes it down. The end. That was wow. so awesome. Oh, that was Maria. so cute. Wow. That was, that was so Maria, cute. I, I, My I, need heart. To, I, need to, I need to thank you for feeding me this day. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Right. 10 out of 10. Maria, your ships were showing. <laughs> Yeah, all the ships. I don't know. The, the other fanfic. worldly being ship. <laughs> the fanfic yeah. gods have been appeased. Yes. <laughs> this offering was was found to be <laughs> substantial. I'm just glad that you guys thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, oh, it was so. Uh, once again, you can tell that you are well versed in the fanfic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a, a resurgence of Cell and Kimberly in one of these upcoming episodes. Yes, I just mean, be like a cutscene sure. to the knitting ep- to the knitting, <laughs> knitting circle. <laughs> also, Persephone the pony needs to be yeah. in something. Yes. Persephone the pony joins the knitting circle. <laughs> Oh God! We can keep the so oh God, God. all the hands. Yeah. Dear God, oh. can we keep the can we keep the egregiously Irish leprechauns out of it? Yeah, of I think I th- they can I think go. Listen, I feel like trying my hand at this no. thing that y'all are doing. <laughs> they can be banished to the non-canon realm. It does seem like Robin would be in this knitting circle, though. Yeah, and the fairy yeah. queen. All of these people just... are going to join the knitting circle. It's just going to be a knitting circle of James and Emily's characters. <laughs> <laughs> Thirsty and Rachel are there also for some reason. <laughs> Just inexplicably. <laughs> That's really good. Oh my god. We'll get Maisie up in there. Jill yeah. from the oh, first episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How she joins one point to try and get in on things and then mm-hmm. slowly actually starts to like knitting. How she shows up because he thinks knitting circle is a euphemism. Oh my god. <laughs> Where I get to tie the knot with some hottie hotties, no. right? No. <laughs> and then Algy. Later. So when when do you do the bandolier stitch? How do you? <laughs> oh god! Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, I thought he was just gonna be <sighs> freaking sexiled. And on that note, <laughs> been... right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't oh. actually think that may I actually think we said that before we started recording, but now you all got to hear it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Penis <laughs> investigation, word of the week. Sexiled. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Rachel and Benji come up. Look it up, <laughs> kids. Fifty thousand points to whoever actually finds a definition. Oh please no. <laughs> please oh, no. you know there's one no. out there. That's yeah, fair. there definitely That's is fair. a dark place. They already Absolutely. looked up why the flower pot and the watering can are <laughs> funny. So. I am so sorry. <laughs> Anybody who looked that up. <laughs> okay, I loved it though. That's honestly that, that's honestly really wholesome. I also want to costume. shout out the theme mm-hmm. all across the night for everybody making jokes at Elliot and Liza being a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the actual theme. It's just the Elliot and Liza. It's just ships. the Elliot and, <laughs> and Liza. Liza ship. <laughs> the ship just increased as time went on. <laughs> it started as a is this an intervention to going to I think, I think this is a thing. And then, oh, this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's what the intervention was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just assumed it was uh, I just assumed it was <laughs> any number of Algie's personal vices. <laughs> yes, that is what I thought. I fully thought Algy would be the kind of psycho who would organize his own intervention. <laughs> That's right. I need to stop being afraid of things. So this is a mandatory intervention. Oh That's I need it. to stop being so good looking. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh lord oh oh boy. no oh, we have fun such here. a wholesome halloween yeah a wholesome this was halloween. great yeah uh, yeah this was i missed the fic fest we, we, <laughs> we resurrected it for the Samhain sequel and who knows what next year will bring I squeezed but, in yet another Eldritch Horror Thanksgiving Fick Fest Thanksgiving Fick Fest oh, other gosh, excuses no. for our Fick Killer Fest Killer turkeys there's plenty of opportunities <laughs> no, no 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 we no, cannot no. have this is the same time where turkey, turkey. turkey. Uh, turkey finds Elliot and he starts to turn. Okay, <laughs> you know. On that note, have a wonderful spooky season, everyone, and we will see you again for some other bonus content. Yep. See ya. <laughs> yes. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. 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 See you later, laddies. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>